Hi, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Beans. God. F Hi, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Beans Recording, and what I have in front of me here is the Electron Digitect. It is a drum computer uh, sampler groove box kind of device made by Electron in Sweden. Um, it's my first Electron box. I got it a few weeks ago and have been playing with it. And I made a video of the first seven days of experimenting with it, and that included some performances, and uh, I got some requests from people to go over how I set up the last performance in the video. So that's what I want to do today. But before we can get to that, I kind of need to give you a brief overview of just what this thing does so that you understand what is going on in the pattern that I made. And I'm not going to go super deep into this. Um, Cuckoo did a really great walkthrough of the whole thing. Yeah, let's get to it. And I suggest you go watch it for a full deep dive on the device. But I will go into um, the basics of what are called parameter locks and trigs so that you understand what we're doing when we get to the pattern that has the song. So there are eight audio tracks. You can see them right here. And each one has 16 steps that you can put in there, like so. Um, and that's great. You're thinking, OK, well, I have 16 steps. I can make a little drum beat. And you can. But you can extend the musicality of these 16 steps to a great extent using what are called parameter locks. Um, Electron refers to each of these steps as trigs, by the way. So I'll be referring to these as trigs from now on, not steps. But you can see that we have 16 trigs that are all lit up right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of randomly put in a pattern on these trigs. OK, so we have this kick drum pattern playing, and that's fantastic. But what really makes this box special is I can hold down any one of these steps and start doing all kinds of things with it. I can change any kind of parameter that is available in the box on each step. So I'm going to go ahead and do some of that now. So by locking these parameters to each step, you start adding more and more variation. And you can also change the actual sample that is played on each trig by uh, going into your source thing here. So that's one track of the eight available audio tracks that you have there. And that's just the beginning of what trigs can do. So we've shown that we can change any parameter that's available in the device. You can change the sample for that trig. And where things get really interesting on a 16 bar, 16 step pattern is that you can change how often a trig will actually play based on a, a whole series of, of logic options. So let's go ahead and look at some of those right now. So this first kick drum right here, if I go into trig and I go to this little condition thing here by changing, uh, by turning this knob right here, I can start going through the trig conditions. And we have things like fill and not fill, which will tell the device to play the trig when you uh, hold down a button to instigate a fill or do the opposite. You have pre and NEI, which are uh, things I haven't quite delved into yet, so we're not going to get into them. And then you have things like probability. So you can see that I'm sweeping through a uh, percentage. So, you know, there's a 25% chance now, if I let this go, that this trick will play. Um, and then we start getting into the interesting things up here, where you see these uh, these values, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3. These go all the way up to 8, 8. And what these mean is that this trig will play on the first number of every second number when it comes to this pattern repeating. So if it's one, two, this trig right here will play once every time this pattern repeats twice. And it will happen on the first half of that repeat. So I'm going to make this more apparent and change the trig of all of these to one, two. All right, so there's the first repeat. On the second repeat, they don't play. I'm going to do the same thing for these snares. But I'm going to switch to the second half. So there's a whole slew of these options in terms of how many times a trig will repeat based on this, this sequence 
repeating, uh, going from one to 16 and back again. You can really do a ton of variation between probability and repeating and stuff like that. One last thing that I'll show you that you can lock are uh, re-triggers, and these are sort of a roll effect. So I'll pick a trig here that has uh, no conditional trig on it, so we'll play every single time the pattern plays. And I will put this little up button here and turn on a re-trigger, and I'll hit play so you can hear that. Now, the rate for this re-trigger is over here, so I can... That's really, really fast. I can go down to a eighth note, which you won't really hear, but there's various various uh, roll amounts. And then you can change things like the velocity, how, how hard it hits, and uh, other things. So using a combination of conditional triggers and re-triggers and sample flipping and locking all of these parameters per step, you can take one audio track that's only 16 steps, one bar, and just go crazy with it. You can, you can have a ton of variation. And that's only 16 steps. I have the ability to go into this and change the step value to 64, which would give me four, four bars, essentially. And then you get even more ability for variation per bar. So that's a brief introduction, a brief terrible introduction to conditional triggers. And this will hopefully allow us to go into the pattern that I created and I can show you uh, how it works with you having known a little bit more about the magic of this device. Okay, so this is the pattern. Uh, this is the song that I created for the last performance of the Digitech Diary. And um, I'm gonna hit play real quick. And you'll see that it is only 16 steps. But if you listen to it, you're gonna hear that there's a lot of variation that extends into probably uh, an eight bar phrase. All right, so um, let's go through each audio track here and see what's going on. So you can see that we have a, a bunch of melodic sounds. And that's the great thing about a sampler. You know, this thing is shipped as a drum computer, but Immediately when I saw the demos for it, I'm like, oh, no, no, you, you do more than drums. You do, you're going to do a lot for me. And I loaded it up with a ton of little uh, stabs and bass sounds and stuff like that. There is a factory library with it that's actually pretty good, um, but I, I wanted to be custom. So um, in the project, I have a ton of uh, samples. Each project holds like 128 samples uh, that you can put in. So that's what's going on here. Now, I can play these pads. And you can hear what is assigned to each pad as a bass level sample. If there's no conditional trigger, those are the samples that will play. But with conditional triggers, as we saw before, each one of these cha audio channels can have 128 sample variations. Like if you have a step, you can change the sample. So that's what's going on a lot of the times. Okay, so I'm gonna mute every channel except for the first one and we're gonna listen to it and watch the steps and see what's going on. Okay, these four triggers right here have no conditions on them. I'm just switching back and forth between a kick drum sample and a snare drum sample. These ones, this has a 75% chance of hitting with using the probability condition trigger. This one only hits at the end of a four bar repeat. So if the 16 steps goes by four times, then this bass drum will hit. It's kind of like a fill at the very end. This little reverse sound right here is going on the first measure of every five repeats. So it's kind of off. Like we normally think of, of electronic music having a very rigid one, two, three, four, then repeat, you know, sort of like four, eight, 16, 32 kind of repeat things. But this guy's on the first uh, repeat of every five. So it's kind of a little different. Tuning and everything is normal. Um, this little reverse sample here is pitched up. Yeah, that's it. So let's go on to the next track. So the only two triggers that have no conditions on them are these two acting as a backbeat on the uh, on these two right here. The rest of them have a trigger to play. What's going on with this guy? This guy is, has a conditional trigger to play on the second repeat of a two repeat repeat. 
Uh, this one is a three of three. So again, it's kind of off kilter from the normal four, eight, 16, 32 bar thing that you would expect from electronic music. Uh, another three, three. And uh, we're switching the source sample. You can see over here in the upper right, it says samp. That means that if it's lit up for a trigger, if any of these parameters are lit up like boxed like that, it means that we have locked something to them. So we have a backbeat and then we have these little little guys right here. That's what this guy sounds like. Let's take a look. So a lot of conditional tricks going on. I'm not changing the sound. I'm not changing the sample itself, but I am doing a lot of uh, timing triggers. There's a 2-2, two -two, another 2-2. Two -two. I have changed the, the uh, note pitch by changing the note over here. There's two ways to change a uh, trigger's note, and one of them is with tuning, which is on this page. And then one is like playing a MIDI note over here. Um, the Digitech does have a melodic keyboard and you can play it, you can uh, enter a sequence with it. So that's kind of what you're doing. You're affecting, you're affecting that. Um, another two, two, a two, five, uh, another two, five, two, five, one, two, and one, two, and one, two. So a lot of conditional stuff going on here to give this particular audio track some diversity as it goes through. Somewhere along here. Yes, so on this step and this step, I have locked an additional amount of delay and reverb send, um, which is what you're hearing when those hit, they uh, ring out right there. When you have a little single hit that's popping out of nowhere, uh, using a conditional trigger, sending some to your reverb and delay is a great way to draw attention to it, to make it distinct on the audio track. It's, it's pretty cool. So let's go to the next track. All right, this is the big sort of Boards of Canada chill dub pad track. And there's not a lot going on. I will tell you sort of the way that I thought about doing longer melodies uh, with pads on this device is that I will set my main ones, which in this case is this guy and this guy. These are set to be the first half of an eight bar phrase. And then these guys are set to be the second half of an eight bar phrase. And by offsetting them a little bit, you still get to progress melody through an eight bar phrase, but you don't have to have them right on top of each other. You can use timing. You can uh, micro time each one of these things. You could probably put them right next to each other and give the impression of during an eight bar phrase, these notes hitting on the one on the four if you wanted to, but I wanted them to be slightly offset in this case. So you can hear this one's hitting at the beginning of the eight bar phrase right here using a conditional trigger. This one hits right before the end of that eight bars. This one introduces the next eight bars. And then this one's a little accent right before we come back to the original thing. There is an, uh, oh, there isn't an LFO, interesting. Okay, I thought maybe I had an LFO. The, uh, the Digitect has a two mode filter, low pass or high pass, and I am using it with, uh, here's kind of what the sound sounds like on its own. But uh, with some attack on the filter and turning the envelope up, get a nice sweeping synthesized pad and then drench it in reverb and delay, which are these two sends right here. All right, uh, next track. This is our bass track. And this has a lot of melodic changing. There is a single sample flip, I believe, going on in there on a conditional trig. Let's go through each trig and take a look. So this is set to repeat on the beginning of a two bar phrase, end of a two bar phrase, second half of a two bar phrase. This is a three out of four, which means it's gonna play on the third measure of the fourth repeat phrase. This will play no matter what. We've trig locked the, the uh, note and the uh, velocity. Um, this is a two of a three. So again, it's not going to be on that rigid four, four grid of phrasing that we think of for electronic music. Um, just a trick lock note, trick lock note with a, uh, end, end of a two bar repeat. Um, this will play at the beginning of a four bar repeat, and this will play at the end of a four bar repeat. And then if we go through for the sample, we'll see that only one of these 
Am I gonna have to eat my, oh, there we go. So this one right here is switching to a different bass sample when it kicks in. Um, not all that's going on. Actually, for some reason, I have a high pass filter on this thing. That's interesting. I guess maybe there was too much bass. Too much bass. It's wet, uh, it's, it sends to the reverb and delay or dry. Nothing going on there. Um, again, so we're using conditional triggers to take 16 steps and turn them into things that are like eight bars long or sometimes even longer depending if we use uh, not normal timing for our conditional tricks. All right, our next track is hi-hats. Um, we have a steady offbeat hi-hat on the 3, 7, 11, and 15. That's just triggering the sample normally. And then we have these little tiny accents. Um, some of them are going to involve retrigs. Like this one has a retrig on it. That's what that roll sound is. It's also been pitched up. I like to take, uh, sometimes when I do a retrig, like a little fast roll, I'll pitch it up. It sounds really cool and glitchy. So we're using conditional triggers here to tune things up. That's what that like thing right there means. And then we're uh, using, obviously, like actually, I think we're using a lot of probability here. So 41% chance that this hit will happen, 41% chance that this hit will happen, and uh, the rest of them are more timing-based. So with a combination of time-based conditional triggers and percentage-based con conditional triggers, you can add even more variation to a particular pattern. All right, so these two channels over here, seven and eight, I've been using a lot when I make my patterns for uh, the first melodic inspiration for the track. I'll load up a pad, I'll load up some kind of melodic instrument over here and leave these to kind of be my first layer of melodic stuff on the Digitact. Um, so the main sound for this is that pad right there. You can tell it's panned uh, in the stereo field. And more of the same stuff going on here. We are, except here we're doing a lot more sample flipping. So if we go over to the source page right here and I start clicking on stuff, you're gonna see that we're switching between samples over here. Almost every single thing here has a sample trig locked, except for I guess these two right here. And that's how you hear that diversity in this particular pattern is because we're changing the sample uh, on a conditional trigger with the addition of things like a timing trigger or uh, a note trigger or something like that. We're combining triggers in a 16 step phrase to introduce a ton of variation without really having to move outside a very small pattern, which is awesome. Last track is this guy. The original sound is that deep pad. So we're using a sample flip trigger. We're, we're switching the sample um, conditionally. Um, we're using a reverse. You can hear a reversed sample in there. We're uh, changing the tuning of some of the samples, like you can see right there. And let's see what else. It's like we're not actually changing the note much. Um, we're leaving the filter alone. And it looks like, ah, okay. So that's another thing you can do with conditional triggers. See how this, see how this amp, this envelope just changed. You can lock uh, envelopes. So that's a great way to introduce uh, either like a gating variation or like uh, if you have a sample at the end of a phrase that is too long, you just want it to hit really small, or maybe you've changed the pitch of it or the distortion of it and you want it to uh, hit just very tiny, uh, that's, that's how you do it. You go in there and you can lock the envelope to that particular trig. So all of it together, 16 steps using conditional triggers to change amplitude, filter, delay and reverb send, sample flipping, um, and then using uh, re-triggers and conditional triggers to change the timing events based on probability and the repetition of this 16 steps, we get what turns into an eight bar phrase with a lot of little tiny bits of variation that is actually really listenable just by hitting play. And then, when you want to perform, you have mute modes, and then the 
control all, which is if you hold track and start playing with any of these parameters, you will affect every single audio channel playing right now. And then reload the pattern. So that's how I made this pattern on the Digitact for the last performance of the seven days of Digitact. Um, I hope this has been informative. I know it's a little complicated. The workflow is not intuitive, but it is extremely powerful once you dive into it. If you have any questions about this, I'm very happy to talk to you about them in the comments. Uh, thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful day.